Hi, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Clear to Send podcast. I'm glad to be here with Francois. How are you doing, Francois? I'm very good. How are you? I'm doing great. And uh, it's going to be a good episode about uh, challenges with warehouse antennas because we've just come, a, come out of uh, a few projects where we were at warehouses deploying Wi-Fi, troubleshooting Wi-Fi, and it's not always straightforward when it comes to warehouses because there are a lot of uh, potential challenges with the racks, how high they are, how long they are, no racks, inventory in the racks, as well as no inventory in the racks. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of issues that can occur there, and there were certain things that we both came across that we thought we'd just talk about. Yeah, and it's always uh, for me. Uh, uh, it's it's always interesting to uh, to go in warehouses, measure uh, signal, and see how different antenna kind of operates in the environment. Uh, and like like you said, we we usually have some general rules that we kind of follow to pick up an antenna for warehouse environment. But sometimes we have um, uh, you know new antennas come along that we want to try, or we just kind of. I uh, don't, uh, you know, we don't, we have some limitations on where to install the APs, the antenna and stuff like this. I kind of, you know, create challenges for, for ourselves. Um, yeah. And I, yeah. and I think one of the, um, questions that came out of our Slack group a while back ago was, uh, someone asking whether we prefer to install antennas from the top down. So here's an example antenna from the top down or from the ends of the aisles. So pointing inwards. And, um, there's, I mean, there's different methodologies there, different reasons why you would do it, maybe for cabling reasons, uh, depending on how large the warehouse is, you might want to do it from the sides. But personally, I, I like to do top down, um, uh, to, to spread the signal from the top and spread it through the aisle. So depending on the length of the aisle, that'll, when you do the design, that'll help determine how many you need, but that's just my preference due to the simplicity of installing the antenna and that way I'm not shooting signal through bodies or through, uh, fork lifts that might be in the aisles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and like you said, you have different ways, ways of doing it, doing the design. Uh, you could put it on the wall and then, you know, facing the beam width towards the aisles, which, you know, in theory could allow you to use less. APs and less antenna because you have like a longer coverage area. Um, but then for this to work, you need uh, to be able to install the AP on the wall. Sometimes you'll, you have racks on the wall and you don't have access to the wall. Uh, if you don't have access to the wall, you could always, you know, you know, have the antenna drop down from like a, a tube from the ceiling, a couple of meters, and then give it an inclination. So you can kind of focus the, the signal down the aisle. Um, and, and do it that way. But then that complexified the installation, like you said, yeah, uh, a, li uh, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And the reason why I don't like doing it from the ends of the aisles is having to angle that antenna, right? Being able to tell an installer like, Hey, I need you to install this at a 25 degree angle. Actually, you know, maybe 23 degrees is, is probably best based on my measurement. And a lot of times the mounts don't have, any markings of, you know, 23 degrees, 30 degrees. And it's, you're, it's basically left up to the installer to determine what that might be. Um, I worked with someone where I, where I told them they needed to um, angle the antennas better. And I said, you know, maybe you should use a, a laser distance tool just to try to figure out what that, what, what that might look like because uh, maybe point it towards the middle of the aisle. And, and that's just how I did it based on my measurements when I did it for a validation survey. And mm -hmm. um, with that, with that kind of, what that ca causes is more trouble, I think, <laughs> or more work that we have to do in order to troubleshoot and validate the wireless network. Cause we have to now really validate the installation. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I think it's, um, I usually prefer to do the under the ceiling face down type of design with external antennas in the warehouse. Uh, like you said, it simplifies the installation. It also simplifies the cabling for the cables. They, they can just run all the cable in kind of, uh, you know, under the ceiling. Um, so it makes their job a little easier as well. 
so you're less prone to human errors. Um, and it's, yeah, it, it makes it um, a little easier to achieve. Uh, you may have to install, uh, you know, a little bit more APs and antenna in some cases. Um, but, uh, you know, nowadays we have some antennas that can allow us to have very good aisle coverage. Um, and that's what you, you want to kind of focus on when you do warehouses, because you never know if your racks are going to be empty or full in some cases. Right. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, uh, under the ceiling uh, facing down, that's kind of like what I, go, uh, I kind of prefer as well in, in warehouses environment. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, we have different, uh, you know, you know, we often say that Wi-Fi design is like an art. Um, if you give, you know, the same requirements to different engineers, they will all come up with their own version of it. Um, so it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like this, you have different ways to, uh, to achieve the, uh, the goal and meet the requirements and have a successful Wi-Fi network. So, um, depending on the requirements and depending on how you do it, you may have different ways of doing it. Um, I, I have seen, I have seen successful design. I have done design with angle orientation and, you know, inclination and stuff, but I know that, like you said, it, it complexify everything. Um, yeah. And, so, and that's yeah. why we do a lot of AP on a stick surveys. You and I both do that uh, for, for that reason is trying to figure out mm -hmm. how that signal spreads uh, over distance with the racks. Uh, what does it look like without inventory mm -hmm. and what does it look like with inventory? Uh, there, there are times where we've done both. And it's very useful to understand what that attenuation is going to look like because it, it really helps validate that you've picked the right antenna with the right beam width because the beam width mm -hmm. is going to be very important where if you're sending signal at the end of the aisle, you probably don't want an antenna that's got like a 180 degree beam width because uh, you're, mm -hmm. you're really trying to focus it down the aisle rather than trying to send it across multiple aisles, which will be very difficult with the attenuation. Yeah, and that's something I'm always excited about going on site, testing new antennas and see how the signal propagate. Um, external antennas, you know, if you've never worked with them, they can be a little uh, scary at first because obviously we don't see the signal propagation. We don't know if it's going to fully work. But when you start actually working with them, doing some AP on the stick, measuring going on site, you, you can actually see, you know, how well they can work in your environment. And I really encourage you guys to to do that. Like if you have the opportunity, go on site, taste your, your external antennas, see what they, they do for you, test different angles, test different height, test different uh, uh, antennas, compare them, and uh, you'll be blown away by, you know, what you get um, and how much beneficial they can be in some environments. Uh, yeah, so that's, I always enjoy doing it, even after you know a few years. It's always fun for me to kind of discover antenna propagation. Sometimes you make mistakes as well. You learn from that. You can communicate on the installers, of, you know, and tell them be careful. If you give it that orientation, then you're gonna have a bad result. Make sure you're you're orienting in the in the proper direction, and it can also help you to uh, become a better engineer overall. Uh, but yes, the beam width is very important. Especially yeah. when you when you're talking about the rack area, um, because typically what like ultimately ideally what you would want is something with a very narrow uh, um, horizontal beam, so you can just cover the aisle, but then a very long vertical beam so you can cover along the aisle, right? So that's that's kind of like the ideal. It gives you like a um, a slice of RF that you can just <laughs> you know. Uh, it, 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 you can just use for your aisle. And when you do warehouse, especially when you do like distribution centers where stock will be in and out and you don't know, you know, if the warehouse will be full or empty, it might be, you know, both cases, you, it, the stock might also move around. So you never mm -hmm. know if you're going to have, you know, liquid or paper or different type of material in the racks. So yeah. w when you do the design, what you really want to do is, is focus on the aisle. Um, and not really focus on the, you know, the racks themselves. Yeah. So you can make, you can make your design, um, you know, uh, robust whenever, uh, you know, whatever the, the environment, uh, may, may be. So, uh, having those type of, uh, external antenna that help us to focus the uh, energy down the aisles are very useful for us. Yeah, because most of the time these, these antennas are going to be mounted about 35, 40 feet because of possible forklift operation, right? So you don't want mm -hmm. a forklift to uh, go up 
uh, vertically and then hit the the antenna and knock it down. Uh, very big possibility there, and also a health hazard, uh, safety hazard for uh, the workers. Now, uh, one mm-hmm. of the things that I've I've noticed when doing end of aisle antenna deployments is you you really have to physically go on site and see where you're going to mount this antenna because. Uh, what I've noticed is there could be an obstruction from the warehouse where you've got a beam that possibly blocks part part of that signal as you walk down the middle of the aisle or at any point of the in the given aisle. So you want to test that and validate it and determine, all right, if I'm at this specific point in the aisle, do I lose some of the signal? And of course, you, you want to test mm-hmm. it from your sidekick or you know whatever device you're using to validate. Or, or maybe it's a, an air check, but you also want to test it from the device that's going to be used, the, the handheld scanners, for example, because that's that's going to be a huge difference in RSSI. So you have to create those offsets if you mm-hmm. if you don't have that device. But I like to actually bring the device with me and test it down the aisle, try to replicate any kind of issues, and then see if you can make any modifications and then test again to see what that difference is. Is that something similar yeah. to you do, Francois? Yes, um, and it's I do that when I do the validation uh, survey. Um, every t- it's like that my first step in the validation survey is is creating that offset and making sure uh, that uh, you know I have the right the critical equipment with me with me the LCMI, and it also helps the customer understand that we're building the network for that device. Um, so it's it's always a good learning experience for them as well. But it, it's funny you mentioned the stuff under the ceiling because recently I had a customer send me a picture of a huge fan yeah. that was under the ceiling. And <laughs> There's then also his, this. <laughs> yeah, and then in, in in that warehouse we were planning on for the more more the open area where yeah uh, we're planning on using some down tilt omnis. So we're planning on dropping them from the ceiling. And he told me we cannot do you know these antennas because. We have some these huge fans, and then in my head I was like, I've never really seen something that big. And then the next day I go to another warehouse and I see one. Um, and no, then, they're common. They're very yeah, common they're common in the states. <laughs> it's like it's they, like I never realized they were they were there. So yeah, they look dangerous, but they they are um, what they call big B A F. Uh, they're literally called. There's a vendor called or manufacturer called big ass fans and that's, <laughs> that's what they make and they are literally huge and i remember having a design around those as well and uh, that's another set of challenges right and that's why it's great to coordinate with different departments uh w- once you get that floor plan it's not just about the racks right it's also about where maybe in a warehouse you're dealing with refrigerators where are the the ac units mounted where are they mm-hmm. going to be uh, where are the fans going to be? That way you can design around those obstacles. And then, um, so so really those are the challenges that we run into the most. Uh, are there any other ones, Francois, that you can think of? Yes. Uh, so in, in warehouses, especially in, in distribution centers, you usually have an area with all of the racks. And then you have areas that are more like open. Uh, you know, people kind of, you ha- usually have them uh, cl- close to the loading dock. People load, unload. You may have like a conveyor belt and people pack, you know, packing some stuff. So in these in these environments, um, it's pretty much open space. So you 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 wouldn't need, you know, the, uh, I guess you don't have the same propagation needs as what you would have in uh, in in the in the aisles. Um, so. Depending on the environment, you know, you could also, if you have very high ceiling, you may want to go with a directional antenna with a higher gain. If you don't have that high of a ceiling, um, I became a a big fan of the down tilt on the directional antennas. Uh, If you don't install them too high, uh, maybe up to, uh, you know, 20, 20, 24 feet, feet, yeah, something like that, eight meters. Um, they, they, They actually provide pretty good and they have pretty high gain as well you can get some with like 60 bi gain on five gigahertz i have one right here that i've used last week here i'll put it in the frame um that that has a higher gain and and i really enjoy these uh, antennas because they give you pretty good uh, coverage they have higher gain and uh, i've had really good you know, success and, and results with them. So the down tilt omnidirectional the antenna for those open areas, uh, if you don't have too high of a ceiling or if you're able to bring them down, uh, it's it's really um, a solution that I 
kind of enjoy using. Um, yeah. 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 That's what I do too. I use either a patch antenna or down to uh, Omni in those, those sh it's the shipping and receiving areas where one side mm -hmm. of the warehouse, they take all of their inventory, put them in the racks. The ones that need to go out to the stores or to the customers that are on the other side of the warehouse, they're, they're shipping all that product out. So you could have challenges with uh, conveyor belts and packaging areas. And so you, you don't always have the ability to either bring the antenna down to the height that you want, but that's what um, good use of like all thread or, or some other mm -hmm. way to, to, to extend that to a specific height. Um, I, I, I like that you brought up the idea, um, the, the idea of the, uh, the gain, because when you're mm -hmm. doing, when you're mess, trying to decide on an antenna with gain, uh, and, and beam with, I think it's, uh, very important to test that out in an aisle, because if you're doing it, doing the antennas mounted from the ends of the aisle and you've got a very narrow beam with, with a high gain, you've really got this small sliver of like, it's propagating that signal very, very specifically. Right. And then of course mm -hmm. it'll spread out over distance, but you may have a scenario where someone's directly underneath that antenna as it's pointed you know, towards the, the aisle, but they may not be getting the best signal. It, it's you're getting mm -hmm. some side lobe or reflection. And so you just have to be aware of that with the roaming and then um, you have to remember about the, the guys who use forklifts that go up and down. Uh, maybe the signal at the very top of the, the, the rack may not be as good because you've possibly angled the antenna much lower. So you've got mm -hmm. the antenna down here, but, you know, there's a guy over here and he's getting maybe some sort of side mm -hmm. lobe. And maybe the, um, the forklift could be blocking some of that signal. So he's not getting the best signal with his device. So there's a lot of things to test. And I specifically haven't tested signal at like 25 feet, 30 feet, because I mm -hmm. normally don't, I don't normally drive uh, forklifts and I don't think you would want me to drive a forklift, but, <laughs> <laughs> but those are things to consider when you're deploying Wi-Fi and the antennas, right? So that's why I like the down, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, mount them about 35, 40 feet, point the antenna downwards. I kind of use a, a wider patch or, or nowadays you can get those specialized warehouse antennas from, um, uh, Excel techs as an example, they've, they've got those special ones. I have one here. If you want yeah, one, yeah, let's, let's see it. Just happen to have these. Yeah, there you go. That's a big, yeah. uh, here's no name. <laughs> Yeah, see there, that's a what, 13 dBi antenna? Yeah, this one is the 13 dBi antenna, and it has, at the back, you can see it has a little sticker that says vertical beam because yeah, I like it, has a wider, it has a wider vertical beam, but a narrower uh, horizontal, horizontal beam. So you can really, you can if you put it like this uh, above the eye, you can really get like that slice of arc yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, so it's, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty good. It's pretty effective. And and it's a pretty large antenna because that's about that's way bigger than your face, right? So, <laughs> yes, it's a, yes. And it, it it it's a specialized antenna, but it gets and it gets the job done. And I really like that they put those stickers on there because for installers, that's important, right? I've had mm -hmm. installers maybe change the direction they they've changed the direction of that antenna and it totally changes the beam width. I've seen that mm -hmm. done with um, those big Meraki uh, stadium antennas that have a very mm -hmm. narrow beam width. I, I was doing a validation survey and they were horizontally angled down the aisle, but then there were two for some reason that were rotated. And so they were more vertical and that changed the, the propagation of the, the, mm -hmm. the whole thing. And, and so I had to call that out specifically because they're in that aisle. I did test uh, where I lost signal in the middle of the aisle and I didn't roam properly. So that's where I, and, and using uh, basically what I did there is I used Ekahau to just look at the individual access point signal strength and then kind of look at the gap. So I'll pick both APs on each end and look at what the signal mm -hmm. is within the aisle and also what it looks like on um, the adjacent aisles. And so mm -hmm. uh, I guess the other challenge we didn't talk about is what happens when you have no inventory on the shelves or low inventory on the shelves? Because when the shelves are populated, you you do get 
a decent amount of attenuation for these very narrow um, beam width antennas. The signal yeah. will will typically drop quite a bit on the adjacent aisle, but when you have low inventory on the shelves, that's sometimes not the case, and you'll be roaming or not roaming to uh, other access points that are not the ideal one. How, how do mm -hmm. you handle that, Francois? Yeah, and it sometimes is challenging when we do our API on the stake um, studies because we may, uh, you know, have to work with like a brand new warehouse. So when you work with a brand new house, it actually happened to me last week working in this new warehouse, especially right now where people have issues sourcing not only APs, but they have issues sourcing racks as well for the warehouse. So they are still waiting on half of their racks for the warehouse. <laughs> they only have half of them up. Yeah. And, and on top of this, obviously, there's nothing in the warehouse. Um, yeah. But I thought it was still re relevant to go on site, uh, test the, the antenna we had on hand. Uh, and we are more focused on, like, the, like you said, the aisle coverage. Uh, yeah. So obviously, when you have no inventory, the, the floor is going to be reflective. The concrete, we often forget about that in warehouses, but concrete is reflected. We have the racks as well that are going to reflect some or scatter some of the signal. So obviously the results will not be like the propagation uh, that we're measuring. It's not going to be exactly what we're going to get in the in the end, you know, product when the warehouse is ready. Uh, but I think it can g still give us a good idea of the aisle propagation, especially when you are line of sight with the AP. Yeah. Um, and it can kind of help us understand, like you said, that secondary coverage, that uh, cell overlap. Uh, to to understand how you know, the the roaming will will happen in our case the aisles were very narrow and very long so I think we ended up having like two uh, APs so with with two antennas in each aisle and uh, we ended up having pretty good um, um, pretty good overlap within the aisle uh, with just the antenna facing down uh, so I was I was actually pretty pleased with the results. Um, and I think we also have some room to play with with the transfer power, which is always good. Uh, so that you know you can let the if you're using the RM, you can you can let the RM kind of pick and choose the, the sweet spot there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that 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 was kind of like our focus when we we're doing the work. And sometimes you kind of have to adapt to the environment: empty warehouse, half warehouse, yeah. all of this. Yeah, obviously it's better if you can do AP on the stick when the warehouse is. Uh, fully finished fully, but usually yeah. the customer they they're they, like they okay need we go, need to yeah. you know yeah they need to we have need the to equipment installed the... already <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. so i usually keep that for the validation whenever um you know the, the all the equipment will be installed whenever the warehouse will be kind of ready i'm not expecting it to be like full full obviously by that time but at least i will have a better idea of the signal propagation um um, you know, what we could expect. Uh, and then in, the, in, that, in that environment, we're, we're actually using MIST and uh, the customer, they have, uh, they're going to deploy uh, Zebra uh, um, uh, barcode scanners. So hopefully yeah. we can leverage the Android and oh, yeah. Uh, the stuff. <clears throat> yeah, that, that integration. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, and, and the way I've dealt with um, racks that are, mostly empty there's not that much inventory um i'll do the validation mm -hmm. and and another reason why i'm not uh, i don't like doing the <clears throat> excuse me the uh, antennas from at the ends of the aisles is because when they are empty that signal spreads across many more aisles than you needed to and mm -hmm. uh, typically those handheld scanners just don't do a great job at picking the right uh AP to associate to just because that signal is being scattered and it all of a sudden hears a better signal from maybe an AP on an, on, an, on another aisle. So a lot of times if there's uh, going to be fairly empty aisles, but there's APs and antennas in there, I'll say, Hey, you know, you should just turn those off. Like don't, don't use mm -hmm. them. Don't, don't, don't enable them. If you're not, if you don't plan on putting inventory there for a good amount of time. And so uh, that's one way to approach it, like in a phased way, just kind of like how some warehouses will phase their their inventory. Like they typically will place their inventory in aisles they'll go into often versus spreading them mm -hmm. across. Um, but, you know, it just depends on the, the business. And it's just getting to understand what they do, how they do it, and then working with a team to give them a plan of, all right, you've got empty aisles, it's creating over, too much overlap, 
either lower the transmit power quite a bit or just turn them off completely. So you you also have you, uh, you also make me think of uh, you know uh, when you use the directional antenna over the um, the aisles. Uh, you'll end up with having, you know, antennas on every aisle pretty much. Yeah. But at the end of the aisle, if you have like an alley where, you know, forklift will just go down very fast or something yeah. like this. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't place an antenna over there, they are kind of roam in between yeah. each of the, um, the aisle APs, which is not ideal. <laughs> so I always try to add another uh, antenna for the, the end just alley. That. Yeah, just for that. And then you can change the orientation. So you have that vertical beam width that goes along alongside this alley. So when the fork, forklist goes into this alley, it can actually roam to that yeah. AP. And then if it goes all the way to the end, it can stay associated to the same AP the entire way. That's a good point. Um, Be- yeah. I've seen that in Meraki because uh, Meraki likes to give you a lot of logs for clients. And um, some mm-hmm. clients will come to me saying, Hey, we have a lot of failed authentication. Like what, h- how do we figure out what the problem is? And I'll ask them like, watch those specific scanners. And are those held by guys on forklifts? Like, typically mm-hmm. they'll be roaming to many access points very quickly that they won't even be able to complete the authentication process because they're mm-hmm. only on that AP for maybe one second. So Mm -hmm. it's just something to um, understand the workflow of people, how they use scanners and even talking to them. When I do validation service, I'll ask someone who's on a forklift. I'll just try to gauge what their experience is. And then they'll tell me like, oh, yeah, like there's a specific area where I always drive into and there's just no signal. I can't my my uh, device freezes up or uh, it's good to talk to people to figure out what their their issues are because mm-hmm. uh, it here's one thing but maybe if you're walking around and they know you're you're there to fix wi-fi they might just be very open to you telling you where your challenges might be and maybe it's because either the antenna's not properly you know screwed on the the leads aren't properly on the ap or ap's missing and installer and forgot it like i that that's the reason why we do these validation surveys one thing we didn't talk about is, you know, the use of internal omnis in warehouses and the use of the little omni, uh, you know, stick dipole antennas, dipole, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you want to try to avoid this, um, especially the integrated omnis. Uh, you know, we, we've seen it with Roa and uh, usually yeah. they call us because Wi Fi doesn't work, right? Um, yeah, I, so I, they I don't really work. work well at that. I've made it work for some, um, I, it's not my go-to it's usually because it's, that's the APs already there and they don't want to replace them all. (laughs) So I will Mm -hmm. either I'll redesign the whole thing with their existing access points. And, and what I've come across is people who put too many, uh, of the internal Omni APs in a single aisle where, Mm -hmm. I mean, that thing's uh, propagating 300, 60 degrees you if i did the design i can show you that one ap would cover that aisle. <laughs> mm-hmm. but roaming wise and and receive signals probably not going to be very good for the the handheld device and then if you use the uh the dipole external like the stick antennas um if you use like for these type of omnidirectional antennas the higher the gain the more horizontal Yes, coverage yeah. you're gonna get not 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 vertical. So if you think uh, you're gonna use a high omnidirectional antenna, high gain omnidirectional antenna, and, and it's gonna be fine, even though you have a higher ceiling, um, it's it's kind of counterintuitive. It's gonna yeah. give you more coverage under the ceiling yeah. uh, of the warehouse and less the, on the, the forklift floor. guys. So, the forklift yeah. drivers will have a <laughs> great signal when they get up there. That's actually a common problem I see IT teams doing is they go, they have those APs and then they say my handheld device isn't getting good signal. So I increase the transmit power, but Mm -hmm. um, that typically doesn't work very well either. Like you said, for those reasons. Yeah. So that's, um, yeah. um, I guess one thing I wanted to mention as well uh, for last week I used the vantage point uh, tripod to mount the uh, APs, which was very yep. convenient as you can go very high. Uh, and then I tried those new, um, maybe you can go wide, Roel, on, on me again. 
Let's see. Your video is kind of choppy, but we'll we'll see if we can make it out. Okay. Um, yeah, I use these uh, kind of they call it the quick release uh, antenna mount, so I can attach the uh, the big antenna onto this. And then I can quickly install it uh, to the mount as well. I don't have the plate here, but there, there's a plate that goes here that attached to the mount okay. at the top of the mount, which makes it very easy and um, you know uh, to to can mount the external antenna yeah. and it fits well with the with the tripod, so you don't damage the tripod. Uh, you know, clamping some sort of articulated mount or something of your own. Uh, yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty nice. Yeah, we're big fans of the Vantage tripods just because of the stability at the height it can go. It's very lightweight, and um, we've used it successfully in multiple warehouses. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be using one pretty soon in another warehouse. And um, check those guys out. We'll have links and photos in the show notes if you go to cleartosend.net slash three zero three. We're um, three episodes over mm-hmm. three hundred which is, is great. So um, we have more coming. Uh, we want to thank you guys for listening, being listeners, and sharing the episodes with other people that you think will find this helpful. And uh, see you guys on the next episode. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.